Well, I found it's we've been doing a, a series of I don't know if you guys are aware, but our uh, state's attorney, Kim Fox, one of the things she did when she first took office, one of her campaign promises was to expunge records of uh, people who had been convicted of cannabis crimes and completely expunge them. And the reason was twofold, A, because it was unfair and now that things were legal, but also to give these uh, particular people an opportunity to actually participate in the industry that has, you know, that they, that basically altered their lives by putting them in jail uh, unjustly and give them access. I did not know at the time that if you were conv convicted of a cannabis related crime, you can't even work in the industry, like at a dispensary or any of those things. And I found that you, one of the men in the documentary had talked about men, black people who had been convicted of cannabis related crimes would be bad businessmen, which I thought was completely, you know, ridiculous. How have you guys, what have you guys seen as far as this shift as cannabis becomes legal around the country? Are you seeing the shift towards making things more equitable? Well, you know, it's a state to state situation because we're still federally Cannabis is still federally legal. We're hoping that Biden and, you know, we've been saying and trying to send a message like we'd like to get in there and have a screening and a discussion mm. with the president and the vice president who both kind of indicated that they had evolved in terms of where we are with cannabis and these and the injustices that have been uh, laid down. But what you what you see is state to state, their variations in terms of not we i'm not completely dialed in on what's going on in illinois except i heard that unfortunately i don't think there's still any black owned uh, cannabis businesses in the state of illinois which is really like shocking and we hope they can figure that out um and then hearing about the fact that those that have been most victimized and criminalized by this beneficial plant as we unravel all the years of lies and misinformation um, that you know those people can't participate in this. So some progressive states have made moves to address those issues effectively. I think in California, I know in, I think in Massachusetts and Maine, and I know in New York what's on in the legislation and being fine tuned is supposed to be, once again, we hear is the most progressive, where they want people that have been victimized to get a piece of the pie to helpfully, you know, own and partake in all of this. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing, it's a checkerboard situation from state to state, right. different set of dynamics, which is crazy. So we're hoping there's some federal movement can happen in terms of either the, uh, the, the banking issues as well as just le taking it off of the schedule that has cannabis in the same categorization as heroin, right. which has no value except people are dying um, right. and killing, whereas cannabis has killed no one and right. lots of medical benefits. So it's a state by state situation that we've seen. And I know with Bernard and I, we're go we're gonna, I'm gonna be down in New Orleans with him because we're learning now that medical is coming to Louisiana, the state mm. where he had to go through all this stuff. And we're going to be meeting, there's a bunch of other prominent uh, folks of color are going to be in uh, New Orleans talking about all of these issues so that we can hopefully, you know, get ahead and get a foothold in um, getting some equity, yeah. literally, yeah. like some real equity. Bernard, you are direct. You have been impacted by all of these um, these unfair laws directly. I was literally floored when I heard your story about yeah. how much time you got. And so what, yeah. I, I, I was floored. Can you talk to me a little bit about that experience? Yeah, of course. You know, it was it was it was rough. It was traumatizing. And mm -hmm. uh, just just kind of back, like Fab said, it was. It was more of a racial thing and uh, it's been happening to our people forever. You know, it's really, really cruel. And what I wanna just get across that, that was over eight years of my life that I cannot get back. Right. It was, you know what I'm saying? It was extremely crucial. 
uh, took away from the kids. It tore my relationship up. You know, it's damaging. Mm -hmm. But um, now I'm, I feel better now. And my mission is I'm the face of unjust. And, and my mission is now to take this bitterness and make it better. I went, I went through hell and back, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm going to be in a place now where I can take care of my family and all that's fine. But it's a bigger mission now that I want people to understand that um, I have to go back inside and speak with people and try to help the people that's been unjust. We, we, it's a war against the people of color, not the drug, not the plant. And right. um, I just feel good that I'm going to have a platform to like go back out and just talk with people in jail and just be a glimmer of hope that we could come up out this hole and be a part of this thing without without no more negative feedback. We've been we've been tricked a lot. So I'm just excited to be able to reveal the truth and uh, talk about the ingest. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I'm, I'm really excited and I um, I just want to be able to play this part because I have a bigger mission. Yeah. I'm, I'm here now. Um, all of these things happen for a reason. I'm excited that some of the progress is coming. Louisiana is totally against everything. So we have an, a, a color pill effect, but it's, it's really good to know that some progress is going on in uh, the things that was done to me, I was another stepping stone to get this progress going. So I'm just excited to go out and help and help people that really need to, you know, live a live different with what I went through. You know, right. I want to be able to talk with people to help us get educated. I don't know. I learned a lot of different things myself about the plan. So I'm I'm just really interested in just canvassing and getting a message out about the unjust that's been happening to people of color for so long yeah. and other people have been capitalizing off it. Absolutely. Yeah. Fab, what inspired you to get involved in actual advocacy for cannabis legislation, cannabis use? What inspired you to get involved? Well, you know, I've been aware of a lot of these issues most of my life. You know, thank God I had really uh, a lot of information flowing around me. My dad was, you know, like I said, he was like an intellectual who was, you know, cannabis fiction, you know, user, but also like knew that there was a lot of BS around all the problems and it's the gateway drug and all this yeah. was never really the the reality, the the horror that was painted, the reefer from the reefer madness era. Um, and so, you know, learning all the history of this when I was working on the movie Grass is Greener, I was like, wow, I didn't realize like there were medical studies done in the 30s that proved none of this was true. And then in the 70s, when Nixon used it as a weapon against people of color and progressives, there was a medical study done and, and it was proven that this plant was harmless and could be beneficial. And so, you know, it was just an awakening of getting all the facts and the details and plus talking to my homies, even Cypress Hill and Snoop and those guys that made their television debut with me on Yo! MTV Raps, like to talk to these guys and to have like Be Real from Cypress Hill explain when he read Jack Herrera's book, The Emperor Wears No Clothes and all the, one of the first really impactful books that broke down how this plant was used against people and all the lies that were told. When he explained, we decided then that Cypress Hill was going to be about that and the plant and confronting the issues. And I was like, wow, I didn't realize that, you know, how much, you know, a lot of us just thought that they were a hip hop version of Cheech and Chong, you know, right, they got, right. they made cannabis comedy movies in the 70s. And that was like informed me that they really had a mission to use the platform of music and culture, but also to inform us. And when I think about the fact that California got medical way back in the 90s, I think those groups had a bigger a part of changing people's sensibilities as the as the people in other forms of music, rock and roll. And I mean, even Rick James, like, you yeah. know, his song, Mary Jane was really about cannabis. And, uh, and so 
that was, I just thought, a great way to tell the story, yeah. the story of America's music, which cannabis has been intertwined with. But then looking at the criminal justice part was just super shocking and had to be illustrated. So that was the mission of the film is to mm -hmm. show the musical, historical, cultural connections, but what the criminal justice misjustice has done to to far too many people. Hence Bernard's case, which I'm, I'm so glad I chose to focus in on Bernard's case. And then luckily he got a parole in the midst of filming wow. uh, Grass is Greener. And that's how we met. Yeah. When I go down to Louisiana, it'll be my first time back since going specifically to watch Bernard get freed. Wow. Um, now we're going back to talk about the situation and the fact that his home state is about to have medical cannabis and hopefully soon recreational and people can get the medicine as well as just feel better. It's yeah. amazing. Well, talk to me about Be Noble and, and this partnership you guys have with uh, Kira Leaf. Can you tell me about that? Shit, like I said, well, when I met Bernard when he walked out of prison, it was a moving moment. It's a it's a big kind of moment in the movie. Please watch my film Grass is Green on Netflix and uh, you'll see me meet Bernard. Literally, I gave him a big hug when he walked out. You know, his parents, his, his mom and his sisters were just tears and and of joy. I'd never really been that close to a moment like that. And it was real. And Bernard, I just always remember him one of the things he says in the film when he literally walked out of prison was he said, man, I don't know what's going on. I see things happening on TV. And then people are in jail with him for less th than the amount of cannabis he had, which was two joints. That's crazy. And I just felt like, man, we got to do something. And so I wanted to be a, be a part of the business, but I also wanted to raise awareness. And Bernard's story just became a way. And we you know, we're playing around. I kept in touch with him and me and my business partner, Ron Samuel, we just came up with a, let's call it Be Noble, um, name it after Bernard. And it was like, oh, wow, like Noble, like built into his name is this yeah. idea. Like, and so we play on that in the marketing. And then we said, man, let's come out with a two joint pre-roll to remind people that this brother went to jail for this. Now you can yeah. smoke these two joints and enjoy this high quality count because Literally, Cure Leaf is making some is some really good cannabis in these uh, in these pre rolls. I should add, and you know, I gotta tell you, man, Bernard's attitude has been a key thing because he was so encouraging and just so appreciative. You know, he was just blessed with even before I got on. Major people in criminal justice reform jumped on to help his case. It just was a standout, um, egregious case where they gave this man a 13 year sentence, hard labor for two joints worth of cannabis. And so it's just, you know, he is playing his role, his position beautifully now as somebody that's like really an example of, of uh, getting through all of this hardship as, and, and being a face and a voice to help and raise the awareness that there's people, good people, lives damaged and ruined that we need to get out and get fixed. And yeah. so, and also we'd like to see more of us partake in the business and this opportunity. Once again, as, as we started talking, like a lot of people of color pioneered this as a, bit, as a business to take care of families and to put some food on the table and provide this beneficial plant which has good medicine and has killed no one. I like emphasizing the fact, just from just regular alcohol poisoning, 100,000 people a year die. Um, and alcohol, they figured out a way to regulate it and, and keep it under control and keep the kids away from it. And um, cannabis has so much uh, beneficial goodness and medicine and just to get our heads right, you know? Right. I mean, we've been medicating. I never thought of my cannabis usage as, as self-medicating, mm -hmm. but when I realized that uh, the thousands of soldiers that suffer from PTSD, opioids is one of the treatments. There's proof that these guys are getting relief from the use of the medicine in cannabis. And so when I think about people of color who grew up in the America that we, and our parents and grandparents came up in and the stress 
of just being who we are was upon them, a little cannabis could have very much eased that like, right. oh man, I know they on that nonsense, but we okay and we gonna get through this and we gonna do what we gotta do. Well, I gotta, uh, Bernard, I, I, this has to be kind of a full circle moment, you know, from defendant to defender, you know what I mean? Uh, oh. and, and being an advocate, what does that feel like at this stage in your life, you know, having gone through so much and mm -hmm. now actually being able to reach back through this product and actually help those who are in your situation. What does that feel like? So it was, it's, it's, it's been amazing ever since. It's, it's just like Fab was saying how he never been that close to a scene like that with somebody coming out of prison. Mm -hmm. Well, I've actually never been that close to a moment like that myself, but I was actually the scene itself. So um, just to, be around someone like Fab, it was a it was a really great blessing. Um, a lot of mental things went on in prison. Prison is designed to break a man down mentally, and it sets us up to come back out here like a mad dog. So uh short story when I got in there to be in the frame of mind that I'm in now that Fab is always talking about. I decided that I was going to be there for a little while. And I grew into the frame of mind of telling these white folks that you took this body, but I worked on my mental. Mm. And that kind of, you know, with me coming from a struggle lifestyle, um, it was it was hard, but it was kind of like a resting place, stuff I had seen before. Mm -hmm. So I made it, I made it through that mental stress and all that other crazy stuff and to actually come out to be this voice and have this platform. I'm more, I'm more driven than anything. I don't, I don't feel none of that pain. It happened. It was, it was crucial. And uh, it destroyed a lot of things for me, but to, for it to come back full circle with this man on the other end of the camera that I used to watch on TV. Right. We got, we got friends. You know, I couldn't have thought of no things like that. So to actually just be where I'm at now, uh, it's bigger than me. I want to go back in and I want to show the injustice. These people have been capitalizing off just lying to us since forever. And to be able to reveal the truth and help people of color and just be a glimmer of hope, you know, for the next man. Um, that's my mission right now to just advocate and do everything and, that's positive, but the, yeah. the Be Noble brand is super, super exciting, I'm all for it, but I got a lot of work to do, so that's my new job. Yeah, well, that's yeah. not a bad profession, I'm not, <laughs> that's not a bad profession. What would you guys like to see um, as far as legislation um, around cannabis? Well, legislation, um, we'd like to see the plant freed up, we'd like, everybody that's been in prison for a nonviolent cannabis of offense to have their records expunged. Like black, white, any, everybody that, you know, from a seed to a joint, even mm -hmm. if they had five, 10, 15 pounds, I mean, come on, the plant, let's expunge those records and let's like, let's, let's make this a more equitable situation. And then I think um, legislatively, um, in the various states to really lean on our legislators to send an email to really when we encounter them to let them know that we're not happy and what can they do to make this a more equitable situation and um, the other companies the other big cannabis companies in America like Cureleaf has stepped up we'd like to see them step up and try to develop social equity brands of their own figure out a way to use this plant to raise the awareness because you know the thing about cannabis and snoop says this brilliantly in my film a lot of people bring this up to me how snoop talks about it you put a bunch of people in a room and a <laughs> glass of alcohol they're gonna end up being in a fight right <laughs> You leave some cannabis in there and you come back, they'll be in there taking selfies with each other. Right. You know, <laughs> there's, some, there's a feel good, bring people together vibe that's inherent in this plan. Yeah. 
that yeah. can help really make situations better across the board, man. Yeah. So let's Amen. get rid of these, yeah. all this evil that's been heaped upon this beneficial plant. And let's let's get these laws, let's get this legislation, let's create something a little more equitable. Because listen, if it's not, we're never gonna, we're gonna keep making noise. And yeah. that is without question. We're gonna be loud and proud without yeah. question. I cannot thank you guys. This has been so much fun. I, I can't thank you guys yeah. enough for, for speaking you, with me.